Ladies and gentlemen, we're back in the building! Fellas, you don't even understand how long I've been wanting to do this. Chris knows exactly what I'm talking about. I have a pretty, have a pretty good understanding, actually. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you for finally allowing it to happen. And uh, for those that may not know who you guys are, how it's, I just don't understand how it's possible. But if they don't, can you introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything you'd like. Hello. We are Wind Waker from Melbourne, Australia. I am Liam. And with me, I have Chris. Hell yeah. Uh, it's uh it's at Wind Waker tweets on Twitter and then just right. at Wind Waker in general on all the other social medias? I think so. What what is it? Right, that's a good out. question. I don't know what our handle is off the top of our head. I think it's Who, a, Wind I think, Waker Band? Is it Wind Waker Official or Wind Waker? Wind Waker Official. It's one of those. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Hell yeah, well, I appreciate you guys being here, man. This is, this is going to be fun. Uh, I know you were a little caught off guard about the hot sauce. We'll get to that later. But uh, Liam, yeah. <laughs> I want to I want to start with you, dude. Uh, so so we talked a long time ago regarding when you were in, in Reside. And uh, yeah. first I want to know, obviously Reside dropped Palace about a year ago. Do, are you still mm -hmm. in Reside? And do you, how do you balance being in both bands? Um, it's a good question. Uh, yeah, Reside is still making and developing music. We developed a lot um, over the pandemic um, and then we've kind of even worked on some more and I mean with my re-entrance into Wind Waker it certainly put things you know a little bit on the delayed side of things or it's it's changed the way that the band creates music and when we can get together but um, no the guys are still working on music um, even without me and um, I'm getting together sort of in like a producer role and yeah that we've still got music that's um, soon to be coming out I think yeah can you so Oh, my bad. Chris, did you have something? Yeah. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, can you, can you, can you walk me through the phone call when you find out that Will has decided to leave for personal reasons and then the fellas ask you to come back? Can you tell me about was, that, uh, that story? I was, at, I was actually at, at my, at my day job and I get a call from Indy. Um, the bass player and um, I, I couldn't talk to him and I was like really busy I was like oh can I give you a call back and then I call him back on the way home and I'm like it was like I I had such an excited like feeling of like oh like this is like a really cool opportunity hmm. and it came at a really good time because I was, I was kind of getting in a bit of a rut in creatively and um, yeah so I got asked by Andy you know uh do you want to audition? Um, we've been audition. He said audition. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I, did. I, I auditioned like everybody else that was asked. And um, yeah, we ran through a couple songs and yeah, the rest is history. Mm. It, was definitely, it was definitely a thing where we had a few people uh, as options, but as soon as Liam did his audition, it was the only one that felt right. Mm. Is it, Chris, is it, how, how is the feeling jamming with him all over again? So it had been a couple of years, uh, but it's it's completely different because he's the front man now. He, I'm used to him playing guitar. Yeah. Uh, and normally we're roasting him for his guitar playing. Yeah. Now we're, yeah. Now we're roasting him for his vocals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, keep going. No, it, no. it's 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 been wildly different, but like also we've got the advantage of that chemistry and that history. So like, I know how Chris works mm. and, and Chris so knows how I work and, and having, I think it, it was kind of perfect the way that it's all kind of come full circle because it's given in that time that I was away, given opportunity for other members to kind of find their mm. place creatively. And now me coming back, now I have to sort of like work around this other person that like, I also, you know, collaborate mm. really well with. So yeah. It's, it's a really, it's a really like perfect story of if it didn't go exactly the way it has gone, it wouldn't have worked. Mm. But it's, it's everything has just happened in the right order, and it, I feel like we're where we need to be with it. Hell yeah! It's like, but it's super, it's super cool. Like I think it all just the timing was perfect as well. Like I just think 
like I was doing a bit of recording, like I was I was doing a little bit of work with Reside at the time. So I was spending a fair bit of time with Liam around the time all of this sort of started going down. And so he was he was in the loop on what was going on to an extent. To so we like extent, we yeah. sort of loosely talked about it. But we hadn't we hadn't particular like specifically asked him to do an audition no. or anything like that. At that, that. point, I, ha- I I thought I had no chance. Of <laughs> yeah, so. for sure. C- Chris, you're uh, you're uh, you're often referred to, and we we check out probably six or seventy bands a day, five times a week on the show. But I feel like at least two or three times a week we figure out that hey, this band from Australia recorded with you. I want to pick your brain yeah. a little bit about your production, where you started from. Who did you learn from to become such a great audio engineer? Well, I've been doing this since I was a kid. Like I literally, you can you can see me in my room when I was thirteen using I don't know what program was I using at the time, Acid Express or something <laughs> absurd like that that probably doesn't exist anymore. Sitting there learning how to program out beats and uh, all of that, and I've just been doing it for so long that. You know, we come from a small town called Wagga Wagga in New South Wales, out in the country. And when I was in maybe when I was maybe like 16, 17, uh, I was just starting to get hit up to record people all the time. Um, I never had any like proper training or anything like that. I learned it all from the internet. I sort of just figured it out a lot. And when I moved here, there was just obviously a lot more, a lot more bands and. It all kind of happened very by accident. Like I didn't come here with ambitions to be a producer full time or anything like that. I came here with Wind Wake Up, but it just happened so organically. And you know, I now probably work with twenty to thirty bands a year, and that's awesome. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of practice. So I just I keep trying to get better, and I keep trying to hustle, and I'm. Uh, Chris keeps just, getting better. Is really everything. Well, yeah. <laughs> everything sounds yeah. amazing. I love. Uh, I love just about everything I've, I've heard from. Uh, from uh, definitely the last martyr. All the stuff from them is fantastic. Uh, does it? I don't know if you can answer this question, Chris. But does do you anticipate Fearless maybe asking you to record something in the future, or, or is that a possibility? I'd love that. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't know if it's necessarily up to the label. I feel like um, the pro- on the producer level, you really almost want to have that relationship with the band. That and there, there's only one other Australian band on Fearless. Okay, uh, Who's, who is that? Eat your heart out. Your heart out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I I'm honestly not sure. I hope I hope that if I just keep putting out better work and whatnot. Uh, it'll catch their attention at some point as well. Like they're, they've been stoked with me doing windy stuff the whole time. Like they've never, mm. they've never tried to suggest that we go to another producer yeah, or anything like point. that. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's, that's but cool. I remember asking Jono at the start of the year, it was like, do you want us to go some, with someone on this next record? Or are you happy for me to keep doing it? And he's like, no, I think it's cool that you guys are doing it. So yeah. Um, um, so I don't know, I'm I'm pretty happy to just let it keep growing organically. That's how it always has. Um, I'm not in any rush to try and push this angle that I'm going to start producing bands on their catalog. Sure. I uh, I reached out to Will earlier today, and I was like, "Bro, I can't believe today's happening. I wish I could chat with you as well." <laughs> and he said he sends his love, but he actually wanted me to ask you guys something. Mm. He said, mm-hmm. "Can you tell them stop being cringe and release album two already?" That's literally <laughs> that's literally word for word what do you want me to tell you guys? That that, that sounds like Will. And just be, just right. for that we're delaying it even more. Yeah. <laughs> so the album two is done. No, 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 no. We're 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 right in the thick of it. Like you've caught us on a week when we're you know we're writing and um, mm. recording and and doing stuff. Um, and we've got a bit a bit other things going on as well, but um. Yeah, no, we're, we're we're right in the thick of it right now. We're not finished, no. Um, yeah, I think I don't know what sort of time frame we're looking at, but we really wanted to also just make sure we took our time and got it perfect as yeah. well. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure on this one for us to nail it, mm. um, and we want to make sure we get it that right in all aspects. Yeah. So that we can't, you know, we we don't want this to be the record where people go. Oh yeah, you know, so many bands they get to a point where they just start pushing out an album every year, 
the mm. quality drops a lot. And we don't want anyone to blame Liam for the fact that we rushed an album. Yeah. Which is what they'll do. <laughs> <laughs> they'll do that. I totally understand. But yeah, it's, it's going to be worth the wait for sure. And the singles I've heard with Liam are, are superb, by the way. It's a little bit heavier. I feel like some of the newer stuff is heavier, but that, that's right up my alley. I love it. Let's talk, let's talk the Love in the Dark tour with Caskets and Alt, man. Uh, just when, when you guys get the opportunity to do a tour like that, do you have a, a selection in the openers or is that something that the labels decide? Like, these are going to be your openers. These are the dates. Do you have a, do you have a, an option of being like, oh, it'd be really cool if we could bring our mates over here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think, um, it always, every call sort of ends up having to come by us. We like to end, make yeah. the call in the end, um, but we get given options and we talk with our team and people, you know, agents and stuff and mm. work out those things. But it also has to have an element of like, do we feel like this makes the complete package mm. for, for an audience um, member, you know? And I, I felt like we, we selected really well with, with you know, friends of ours mm. all and also bringing out caskets for the first time, you know? Um, bringing out an international band. So, were you were you familiar yeah. with Caskets prior to this? Uh, I, on it personally, no, I, I hadn't heard. I but I when I heard their music, like I we we had a few different options, and then um, I heard them, and I felt like they fit the best. But Chris, I for think sure, I I'd heard of them. I didn't know them particularly well, but um, when our agent Ash suggested them, he suggested them out of maybe like there were maybe five bands he sent us a list of. And we went through them and was like, we listened to caskets and went, yeah, these guys, yeah. these guys fit for Made sure. Made the most sense. Uh, and we've had, there were two other iterations of this tour that uh, got pushed back that had two different international supports. And this is the, so this is the third, third version of this tour to come about and the first one to actually happen. Um, but in the end, I feel like caskets were the best fit out of all of the options that we've had in across all days because... I just think it was it was worth waiting for the right package yeah. as well. Agreed. And, so, and all and all, all like was a no brainer because those are your homies, right? Yeah, kind of. We've we've toured with them, uh, like we, I we toured with their old band maybe like five years ago. Yeah. We've known them for ages. Like we've been playing shows together since maybe 2017. Uh, I've done a little bit of work with them as well. Like they they're just they're good mates of ours. So. It was a pretty, it was a pretty big no-brainer, and they're killing it at the moment as well. Yeah, yeah they they dropped some heat lately for sure. Liam, what yeah. what song is the hardest to perform? That was a predominantly maybe you were in the band when Will or you guys perform a, an oldie, but what song is the hardest to perform live? Uh, I reckon it'd have to be consistently beautiful, right? Mm. Like because and that it depends on when it it you know comes in in the set. Because you know, I might I might be like eight nine songs in, and then I got to go sing beautiful, and it's these really top notes, and I've just been screaming mm. um, for you know thirty minutes by this point. So that one sometimes my empire, um, but I like I I find that one to be I, I found some spots in which I can like kind of consistently perform that one no matter like how my voice is feeling. Um, I don't know. Yeah, at the I, we, we've. For this Love in the Dark tour, we've got a couple of like songs that we haven't played from Love Language yet, um, and those are songs that are quite tough, and I'm learning at the moment. So I guess I guess I could say Trenches is quite a hard one. Okay, hell yeah, mm. Trenches. Do you do you guys ever throw any like way back whens like let anything off fade in the recent set, or is that just kind of oldie stuff? Oh, no. It's nah. not canon, man. <laughs> That's how long I've been a fan. I know about all the old stuff. That's why. <laughs> God damn! Wow. That's an OG. That's an OG one. For I real. think I remember doing a show in like maybe the very start of 2020, just before COVID, and we sort of dubbed it as like the last show we're ever playing any of those like pre-Empire songs. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and even now, like we're not playing a whole lot of Empire either, but we kind of yeah, we kind of said goodbye to a lot of those songs there, um, just yeah. so we could sort of I don't know it's. It, well, At a certain point, you gotta just keep looking forward. We keep ev we're evolving as a band, and I think you know even this this new material is always going to be trying to one up the thing that we've done previously. So why would we dwell too much into it? But I, I think there's an opportunity, you know, way in the future to bring some stuff back for people mm. like yourself. Um, but for the moment, we're always just looking forward. So it's getting it's getting harder too because yeah. 
like when we were making the set list for this, our first iteration of it was like an hour and 15 minutes or something stupid. And we we're like, this is long set. And there's mm. three, three support bands at each show. Like we would have been really uh, cutting their set times down for us to have this massive long set. But there's so many songs we wanted to play that it was really hard to actually narrow it down. So that when to think about bringing back an old one like that, that doesn't feel very natural. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. For sure. Mm-hmm. Did, you guys brought the the triple X hot noodles? Uh, they're downstairs. I'll go grab them. I'll go grab okay, them. wait, 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 Liam, before you do, you guys get to pick the trivia topic. You have the advantage here. So I'm going right. to jam one of your songs. Think about this real quick. Just decide what movie or TV show, if I ask you guys trivia on a movie or TV show, is there one that you could agree on, which is impossible I stump you? I think that's possible. Oh, that the noodles possible. have arrived! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! Thank you, assistant. Thank you, assistant. It's, it's, it's hey, what's up, dude? Hell yeah! What's up, man? I was, I was about to start eating them just because I saw them. I better put them aside. I hate these noodles. So, so they're much. they're like yeah. wicked hot. They're really hot. They're, okay. I have a video of Liam eating them from like two years ago where he's just in tears the entire mm. bowl and he's really good with spicy i food. love spicy stuff and, so, yeah. but it's like know, really it's... really spicy yeah mm. okay it's supposed knowing it's this fun. i'm gonna go get a hotter spicy sauce whether you get the trivia right or wrong i'm gonna do the hot sauce what movie or tv show would you would you pick though do you reckon south park uh probably south park south okay park. South Park it is. I'm going to jump over here and jam uh, one of the newer music videos from you guys real quick and go grab that hot sauce. If you guys are watching, please support Wind Waker any way you can. They're absolutely amazing. This one's called Left in the Dark. Hit the subscribe button. Support them! I don't quite remember when, but I think like two years ago, I had a bit of a hot sauce phase where me and one of my friends were uh, watching the Hot Ones episodes and trying to do all these fucked spicy things <laughs> and then and then when you mentioned it today i was like oh no did i do this did i pause this <laughs> so i brought uh ancho masala scorpion reaper sauce yeah it's got it's got everything it's got baruga scorpion carolina reaper ghost pepper all and it's chunky would you know it's rough when it's chunky uh, that's that's good that's South- right up my alley South Park trivia. I need a second to look it up. Uh, let's say all of a sudden, just hypothetically, Fearless is like, you know what? Second album's coming out. Here's here's five million dollars each, just just because bonus for all the members. Uh, you you can't spend it on gear. You can't spend it on your family or your loved ones. Is there something that you've always wanted to buy, even if you were a kid, but now you have just Uber's amount of money, so it won't even dent the bank. Uh, I, I mean, like, records is probably, like, one for me, like, trying to find, like, collective... I, I, I collect, like, a lot of records and... Or Lego sets, actually. I'd probably spend it on Lego Oh, sets. Lego. <laughs> I'd, I'd spend it on Lego sets. Lego sets? Like, like, big elaborate ones? Yeah, just stupid ones that I wouldn't be able to afford currently. <laughs> they get pretty expensive, don't they? They get they? so They're... expensive, dude. When you get, like, the big ones... Yeah. <laughs> no. What would you... What would you... Like, like, what would you get, Chris? Can I buy a house? I can't buy a house, can I? That's, I, have to, I have to pick something sillier than that, right? Definitely. Um, all right. You a car guy? No. Yeah. $5 million. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> it can't be gear either. Can't be more studio gear. Yeah, no, no. That's why I, hate that's, gear. That's I, why hate I said gear. Lego. I was like, yeah. I wanted to spend it on guitars. Uh, no, nah, okay, maybe I'd buy a Lambo. <laughs> a Lambo? Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, just so I could feel like a rapper. Um. <laughs> Alright, so you... Just, you, you comes with <laughs> just, to, just to ghost ride it with the doors up real quick. Uh, yeah. Have, have You guys picked South Park. Now, in my opinion, yeah. it's easier to pick a movie because a movie is a movie. A, a show is endless seasons, episodes. But yeah, I let you choose. You picked South Park. This is your first South Park trivia. <laughs> There is an episode of South Park which contains a Mexican staring frog. I want to know what country the frog comes from. 
has called a Mexican staring from despite not being from Mexico. Correct. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. I actually don't know this at all. Uh, is it like Peruvian? Is it from Peru? It is not from Peru. I'll give Chris a chance to answer, but I'll give you a hint. It says some hunters were taking video entries from people crazy enough to tape the frog. Uh, if you looked at it, you died. Oh. It was that episode. Is it a city in America? It is not. Oh, okay. It is not, uh, fellas. I think that's. I, like Florida. I think that's a stump. Uh, I, I have no idea. Yes. <laughs> Sri Lanka enjoy oh. <laughs> you picked it enjoy the noodles I'll uh, I'll do some scorpion reaper and uh while he's eating that Chris answer this for me what band uh I, they're all a joy to work with but if you were forced to pick one what was the easiest band that you produced in the last year or two they just, they just they just came ready professional very little post post production no one comes needed. ready and professional everyone comes unorganized and it's a complete shit show uh hmm man he's chugging that <laughs> oh. i just got the hiccups it sucks dude it's so hot yeah <laughs> damn it chris the noodles are hot man have a noodle Perfect. they taste delicious yeah. <laughs> Brutal. Uh, I started working with a new band called Soul Sleep, which um, they show up and it's basically I get to live out uh, the full pop version of what Wind Waker would be if Wind Waker let me go full pop. Yeah. Do you do you want more pop songs for Wind Waker? I'd say so. Do I? Fuck me. Those are hot. <laughs> I hate these. Um, I'm just gonna go on you don't have to eat anymore. Yeah, You're fine. good. But way to be a trooper. He's just, he just doing it for fun. He's just doing it for fun. He's just a fucking <laughs> weapon. You chugged the whole bottle, bro. I did it, but enough of it, and it's it's burning me up. My eyes are, my eyes are water. <laughs> um, I don't even bring a drink up. Uh, do you want some? Nah, All right. I'll drink in a minute. What was the question? <laughs> I already forgot because I'm suffering what the question was. Let's, oh, let's go with let's go with um when can we expect the the next single is it is july. it gonna be pre july okay just before the tour just before the tour so um yeah i don't know if we haven't announced the actual date of it yet but um yeah it'll be it'll be early july is that one oh that's gonna have like a video attached simultaneous release yeah whole package we just shot the video last week um who'd you shoot with really cool who'd you shoot with who's the director um, we did it a bit in house, actually. Yeah, with our mate Andrew Vaughan, but Indy took a lot of uh, Indian and Connor took a lot of the direction on it as well. Yeah, they produced it, and then yeah, Andrew, um, yeah, video like directed it and sort of planned it all out. Um, similar, similar team to our Glow video, but slightly re rearranged the roles a bit. Uh, when I that video, I got you. When I was uh, telling people that I was going to be finally doing this interview, one. <laughs> One question that came up, uh, I don't think it was on social media, but somebody asked me this and I was, thought it was an interesting question. I don't really want to pick apart why Will left because that's his personal reasons. Mm -hmm. But was there ever, was it ever established that if he wanted to come back, is that an option? Well, no, because we've already replaced him now. So... I, yeah. I don't see us ever doing a two vocalist sort of thing. It's kind of it's kind of like we've we've moved on now. Uh, we've mm. settled into this quite well, and we're very comfortable with our yeah lineup at the moment. It's been a big adjustment, so having that to adjust back to that would be kind of counterproductive. I totally but, understand. Like, like it's yeah. a, of absolutely no disrespect. Oh stuff. yeah, like it's um all the like we you know we love Will and like we want I like we hope he's you know doing well like with all these endeavors but um yeah no i don't think that would be what we'd want collectively i, even, I don't think both parties would want that sure um, oh you're gonna move forward i actually need to blow my nose my now my nose is leaking it's that hot <laughs> i'm about to go to the same don't worry yeah yeah <laughs> can now that now that fearless is on on your guys's team 
can we, you don't have to name drop, but can we expect any features on the second album? Ooh, we haven't quite had the feature conversation. We, we had you know, one you... feature conversation, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that one like to ourselves just in case it does happen. Um, um, but it's yeah, but we haven't really talked about it. No, I think we've got uh, every time we've ever talked about features in the past, we have absurdly expensive tastes in features. Yeah, that we probably have. We're probably slightly unrealistic about the kind of features we want. So it's either going to be that, or it's going to have to be like someone that we're mates with that we just want to do it for doing it. Yeah. Is there is is tour <laughs> tour talk beyond um, the love and the dark dark tour? already begun can we here in the states expect to see you guys sometime soon before 2024 we're definitely hoping i don't know about before 2024 um i, I think definitely 2024 is the expectation um awesome yeah 23 is not i'm not too sure no nah, we've definitely we had some we had some offers offers to come but the the timing just wasn't right there's a lot that we're still adjusting to and we really want to get cracking on this next record before yeah all that red tape that Give me two is required to get into your country is you know quite you know a big thing and uh... what, what, what did they require besides besides a, a traditional passport or visa what what did we require uh, be able to earn a certain amount back to be to be able to be like oh we're not losing all our money going yeah so i guess we had some offers to do some festivals over there but they, they couldn't line them up with any we wanted to do a, tours. we wanted to do a tour while we were over here you know yeah. Yeah. just coming for two shows so yeah it so just, it wasn't right the yeah. timing wasn't right and the cost of doing it versus what we were going to get out of it, it just wasn't quite there we want to do it at the right time when we know it's going to be perfect when you, when you guys are on the road, to to I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you. When you're on when we're on the road. When you're on the road, Chris, do you do you bring like are you so busy production wise that you bring a laptop and are just like doing mixing in the van any, anything like that? Are you still working or are you finally relaxed I really mode? Hard to not do that. The last tour you did because of all yeah. the, live, the live content. But we're last tour. Uh... I was mixing audio from our shows to post like content because we took a really sick videographer with us on the road and we put up heaps of videos like we'd play the show the next day and then me and him would be sitting next to each other in the van the next day. I'd be mixing a song from the night before and he'd be cutting together the video. We'd be posting it the next day, yeah. which was really cool. Um, but we don't, don't, we don't normally do that. <laughs> I really, if, I, if I'm honest, I really don't like mixing on headphones. Um, so I, need, I probably need to learn to do that because it's going to become more and more of a problem if I can't. But um, I don't. Yeah, I try to make all of my work uh, be done. Or I have I have an assistant that does some work for me that sometimes keeps the keeps the ball rolling while I'm gone. Liam, do you have any interesting vocal warm up tricks before a live set? Anything? unusual or is, uh, there, is it just the normal like tea lemon honey that stuff he does the, uh, he does the spicy noodles yeah I, I, I really, uh, <laughs> uh what are my unusual warm-ups i mean i like i like to physically warm up like with stretches and stuff like that but i don't think that's necessarily unusual i like to um hmm it was when we did the north lane tour um last oh, yeah. year it was really funny because him and Marcus had the exact same warm up yeah. routine, and you'd hear them, and they kind of sounded similar when they were doing it. So you'd hear, yeah. you'd hear both of them doing it before the show, and you'd be like, "Oh, is that Marcus or we, is that we, Liam?" Yeah, we sometimes <laughs> get in the ring and we're just going, "Wee, yeah. wee." <laughs> so um, no, I, I don't think there's anything unusual. Just like really annoying sounds that make me feel uncomfortable doing around everyone else. So I try and find a really like. A lo like isolated space to do it in what about what about post set post meet and greet autographs at the merch table post all that is there like a a cool down vocal routine to prepare for the next day uh yeah i, I basically crack open a beer straight <laughs> there it is I crack open a beer. I don't yeah. know, do it. what's yeah. the what's the beer of choice for you guys 
It doesn't matter if it's cheap beer uh, or expensive beer. What's what's the best beer over there? Uh, I really like better beer at the moment. It's a yeah, new but... beer coming out of Australia that's like better beer. It's yeah. a, it's it's like the it's like a low carb option. We're kind of been on our like health kick at the mm. moment, and we're trying to do like the low carb beer. Um, okay. Yeah. So that that that's been one. I I like I don't know. I like all beers. I like Asahi and stuff like oh, that. Oh, I like Asahi. Coronas too, yeah. are alright, you know. There's a really popular beer here in Australia called Great Northern, and I feel oh, like, and, and and it's very divisive here because <laughs> it's the most popular beer, but then you have people that have reactions to it like that. It's just like, oh, I guess it's kind of like the cause light in America, you know, like some people love it, the people who love it love it, and then there's people that are like look down on it, you know. I'm about to start selling a beer over there called Best Beer. Best yeah, even beer. better beer. Even better, even, better even better than better beer. Hell yeah! Let's <laughs> let's try one more South Park trivia question. In South Park season seven, Kyle, Stan, and Kenny form a band. What is the name of the band they form? This is this is the Christian. No, 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 no. that's um, it's not that one. That one has Cartman in it. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same episode. Um, so Carmen's is, yeah, is Faith plus one. Faith yeah, plus no. one, and I think they're Moop. They're Moop. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 We get to spin the wheel. So most most of these are tortures for myself, <laughs> but my friends, it has landed on a shoey. Which I found out what a shoey is from Lagerstein uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, I don't, okay. I don't know if you're interested in doing this. You totally can opt out. I'm going to uh, do a shoey right now. You're welcome to join. Uh, but it's a, I it's a thongy. Work. It's a thongy. Oh, nice! You got a thong. How, do you, how does that work? So you just, you just kind of cup it, and then he's gonna cup it. You're gonna it cup in. it, and here, I'll, I'll just demonstrate. I'll demonstrate. Here we go. He's just gonna do it. We don't even have any beer in the house, so... Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm a pro now. I'm a pro. I'm a pro. That is... You're, <laughs> you're basically Australian now. I think that I think that grants you citizenship. So that is, this is because you Excellent. talk to so Excellent. many Australian bands, isn't it? It's true, but Lagerstein <laughs> in particular, they would not let me not do it. And I was like, okay, well, this is kind of gross. I've never seen this before. This is not a common thing in America. And they were like, you have to take the shoe that you're using. And after doing it a bunch of times, I was like, I'm going to retire a sandal, a thongy, because it's it's the most sanitary route, I guess, possible. Australia has so many divisive traditions that, like, the people that follow them follow it like a cult. And then the people that, like, hate it are like, no, we're better than this. Stop making us look like fools. How is... But it's fuck. Yeah, but then those people end up doing them anyway. They do it like anyway, so... How is the, the cannabis laws over there? I know that you guys now have medical, but it's still quite difficult to legally consume cannabis, correct? Uh, I think it's getting a lot easier now. I think, like, it's... Yeah, like you said, the medicinal things definitely, you know propelled it in a way that's I definitely know a lot of people that have it medicinally that probably uh wouldn't buy it like wouldn't have usual grounds to have it medicinally yeah, so it, yeah. must, it can't be too hard I, like, I think it would be similar to how it started over in the US yeah in, in California when it when it first when it first started they were like oh I have ADD. Everyone, you could find that symptom for ADD in like just about anything. And I was like, I, that's what I want. I was like, I got ADD. They were like, weed will work, and man. Right. Here you go. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, I don't necessarily. I, I, I don't have a prescription or anything, but um, I've heard that it's yeah quite easy. <laughs> Hell yeah, uh, we've got time for a couple more. Uh, before I ask those couple questions, is there any is there any bands that that we may not know about that you guys are just feeling? I mean, like smaller, smaller time local bands that just need need a little plug, little love. I um, I just like found a band from Wollongong in Australia yesterday called Drift, and they're pretty cool. They got a song coming out soon. So, oh, yeah, yeah, they're kind of like shoegazy, kind of alt rock emo kind of vibes. Um, I, I really like uh, there's a band from Perth. They're opening our Perth show um, called Rin Rin. I don't know if you've heard of her, uh -uh. but she's really cool. 
which has got like sort of kind of baby metal. Yeah, like anime vibes, guitar girl sort of. Yeah. And baby metal's yeah, coming like, coming to Australia fairly soon. I think yeah. I saw that uh, Relica was was gifted that yeah. one. Yeah, that's huge for them. That's awesome. Between between now and December, what would you guys like to accomplish beyond con- like wrapping up the album and getting it ready for release? Beyond that, what are you allowed to tell me that you would like to accomplish between now and then? I don't. I I personally think. I don't think we need to do a whole lot. Like I would like to have next year planned a bit better. I think I would like to, I don't, I don't, I think the album is going to take a lot of our year up and that's fine. Um, I'd like to just be ready to go on next year. Like I'd really I'd re- like next year. We've talked about ideally wanting to have it all finished by the end of this year. Mm. So that, that maybe could be an accomplishment mm. we can go for. Um, we will, we'll probably, we will tour a little bit more. But, yeah, a bit of touring um, and then, um, yeah, may, maybe like I'd, I'd love to do like, another, like a, I'd like to do some of the, fest, the summer festivals and stuff mm. like that. That'd be fun. Um, Speaking of festivals, so yeah. uh, uh, somebody in in chat, uh, the uh, Jace from Disgust earlier wanted me to ask a question. You guys are familiar with Disgust, correct? Uh, mm, I'm not. Okay, I'm they're, not, they're, they're from shout Australia. Out to yeah, shout out to yeah. Disgust. They wanted me to ask specifically about a particular show, the Shima Day Two Zoo performance. That's oh. is there oh, is there God. a story about that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. Um, that was the show where this was when Liam was still in the band last playing, time. I was playing guitar. Uh, anyway, yeah. we ended up having to call an ambulance for Will. Yeah, there was a really yeah. hot day, and the zoo is on a hot day. It's kind of like, you know, a shed. It's like a tin shed, and it, you know, it mm. re- it contains a, it retains a lot of heat. So, um, yeah, he just like he couldn't perform the show. It was coming off um, another show that we did for Schema on the first mm. night um and yeah so there was a lot and there was, not to mention there was a bit of issues like with the setup and um you know like things weren't patched in right and so it was delaying the set and yeah i ended up having to um front the band for one of the first times it was like the precursor to where so we are that's, i think that's why question. that they wanted me to ask that was the first time that you had to go ahead and just do full-on frontman status kind for win week yeah it was like yeah um and i we, I think we performed two songs that set. Yeah, we played. There was a whole issue with the venue patching and then them also having a curfew where they couldn't get us set up to go on until maybe five, ten minutes before their curfew. So we went on and played two songs with Liam to, to singing. Give con- sorry, to give context. What were the two? The day- hmm? uh, the two songs were The Sitch and My Empire. Yeah, this was back pre-Love Language. Yeah. So this was during the Empire stuff. 2019 two final yeah. things yeah. one's a fun one yeah. one's a serious one serious one uh is there is there any advice you can give local bands that may watch this that uh want to be in your position what is a common mistake you see a local band make or a mistake that you guys made many years ago that you just don't want another band to make um i think be really clear as to what you want out of releasing music you know what's your definition of success and have a clear idea of what that is and it's different for everybody you know what i mean so not everybody's making music for the same reasons um i would say yeah basically know what you want to say with the music you know make make music that like says something and 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 introduces a new idea because that's what sets you apart and that's what makes you yeah yeah. embrace yourself i think a lot of bands try to find success by copying something else that they see doing well yeah like and it's it's so easy to do that you know and i see this every day when i have bands come in to work with me it's like okay Now we want to sound like Bad Omens. Now we want to sound like Sleep Tokens. Like, Mm. no, those bands already exist. You have to do the next thing. Right. Finally, Mm. the last thing is, would you gentlemen be kind enough to just do a plug for me? Hey, we're Wind Waker. You're watching Local Band Smoke Out. You can spin it however you want. The floor is yours whenever you're ready. Hey, y'all. 
We're Wind Waker, and you're watching Local Band Smoke Out. Woo! Fellas, this is many years in the making. I love you guys. I appreciate it. I'll always support you, and you know that. Uh, kudos to you guys on the uh, the Love in the Dark tour with Caskets and Alt. If I was in Australia, I'd probably be at many of the dates to support, but uh, hopefully you sell out a bunch of the shows. Cheers, fellas. I thank you so much for doing this, and uh, we look forward to the second album, man, for real. And the single in July. And the single in July. Single in July. Stay Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Liam and Chris of Wind Waker. Hell yeah. Have a great day, fellas. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Cheers. <laughs>